The story opens up with a young woman named Kessie who's dressed as a bear and passing out flyers on the road to promote her father's sports club, the Mad Tigers. Just then, she sees in the news that a ruthless businessman named Zuno is dissolving all of his enterprises that are not profitable. This worries her because her father's club is owned by Zuno. She rushes to inform him of the news, but he tells her not to distract him because he's busy training his other daughter, Yunju, for a boxing tournament. Meanwhile, Zuno is at his office when his lawyer and friend Yanchen invites him to attend a boxing match of the Mad Tigers. He says he hates boxing, but after some convincing, he finally decides to go. Later, Zuno arrives at the match but quickly becomes bored and decides to leave. At that moment, a billboard is about to fall on him, but Kessie arrives just in time and saves him. The two fall to the ground and she begins to blush, but when she recognizes that he's Zuno, she tries to persuade him not to demolish their club. He responds by saying that the Mad Tiger has no commercial value and that he hates violence. The following day, Zuno is harassed by the media because of his business plans. They think he should save the boxing club as it's a source of livelihood for many people. Just when the situation starts to escalate, our heroine once again shows up and rescues him. She distracts the reporters with balloons before taking Zuno away. The two then escape on her scooter, but they soon fall on the grass and roll on top of each other. She says this is the second time she saved him, so he should reconsider his business plans. However, he rejects her once again and walks away. When Kessie gets home, she notices her father is distraught and he's given up on the club because he knows that the team isn't doing well. This upsets her, so she decides to convince Zuno anyhow. When Kessie hears that Zuno is looking for a bodyguard, she decides to apply for the position. She then begins training herself vigorously to be qualified. When the test day arrives, she easily defeats all of her opponents and shows off her skills. Even though Zuno doesn't like her, he has no choice but to accept her as his bodyguard. Next, he visits a doctor, and we learn that he suffers from a condition called alexithemia, which leaves him incapable of feeling emotions. He's lost all ability to sympathize with people since he can't laugh, cry, or even love. Following this, he attends a therapy session in which he wears a machine and interacts with a volunteer, who will help him express his emotions. Surprisingly, the volunteer turns out to be Cassie, but they can't see each other and can only interact through the machine. While she's teaching him how to laugh and cry, the machine suddenly malfunctions, forcing them to stop the session. In the next scene, the two exit the clinic through different doors. Cassie walks into a pole and clumsily plays it off. Meanwhile, Zuno, who is nearby, feels the impact, which leaves him confused. The next morning, he dreams about the car accident that happened three years ago in which his mother died and he barely survived. He also hears a female voice calling him constantly and telling him not to fall asleep. She puts a bracelet on his wrist and asks him to be strong. When he wakes up, he remembers how the therapist tried to make him smile. However, when he tries to smile, he makes a terrible face, which scares Yanchen. Later at the office, Yanchen jokingly hits Kessie on the head, but Zuno feels the pain, so he confronts her and asks what kind of spell she's cast on him. Our heroine just laughs and tells him to stop being so childish. That evening, Kessie is fighting with her friend in the boxing ring. When she receives several blows, Zuno feels the pain and becomes anxious. The next day, Kessie is waiting for him in the parking lot so they can head to work together. However, he doesn't come downstairs, which is very unusual for him. Concerned, Yanchen asks her to check on him. Our girl heads to his apartment where she discovers Zuno unconscious on the floor. She decides to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on him, but he soon wakes up and pushes her. She accidentally hits her head on the table, but he feels the pain. As Kessie tries to relieve his pain, he notices her bruises from the night before. He grows suspicious and asks her if she was fighting yesterday, but she doesn't tell him anything. Moments later, Kessie gets her period and goes to the bathroom, and this is when Zuno begins to feel her menstrual cramps. He begins to panic due to the stomach pain, so she rushes him to the hospital. After the checkup, the doctor gives Zuno a clean bill of health, but her heroine is still unconvinced, so she asks him about his symptoms. When he describes everything in detail, she realizes that she feels the same type of pain during her period. So, she goes to the drugstore and gets him some medication and sweets. As soon as he eats them, he starts to feel better. Kessie explains that she does this to treat her menstrual cramps. He asks her if she's on her period, and when she answers yes, he's shocked. After leaving the hospital, Kessie notices a girl whose balloon is stuck in a tree. She impulsively climbs a tree to help her, but gets her hand injured in the process. Since Zuno feels her pain, he gets angry and warns her to be careful next time. Our heroine is confused and asks why he suddenly cares. Zuno responds that he doesn't care, but he feels her pain when she gets hurt. However, she still doesn't understand him and assumes he's falling in love with her. In the following scene, Kessie arrives home where everyone is congratulating Young Ju on her recent tournament victory. However, she seems to be upset for some reason and heads to her room. 
Turns out that she's the adopted daughter of this family and often feels left out. She then recalls how the owner from another club named Black Dragon approached her this afternoon. He hit a nerve, saying that her father forces her to fight all day, while his real daughter Cassie lives a more privileged life. He also invited her to join his club, promising her better opportunities and facilities. In the present, Cassie goes to check on her sister, but Young Ju gets annoyed and returns a bracelet she gave her a long time ago. The next morning, Cassie goes to a nearby fountain to make a wish, but since she doesn't have a coin, she throws in the bracelet instead. A little while later, Zuno arrives at the same fountain and notices the bracelet and quickly snatches it up. Returning home, he compares it to another bracelet and realizes they're the same. Since it was given to him by the girl who saved him, he decides to find her. However, Yanjin tells him that the girl's wish might not have been granted because he took her bracelet. So Zuno goes back to the fountain and throws the bracelet back in the water. Later that afternoon, Kessie gets a text from Youngju who says she wants her bracelet back. So our girl hurries to the fountain and retrieves it. When she returns home, she sees her father and Youngju fighting in the boxing ring. Initially, it appears to be a good contest, but the latter loses deliberately to allow her father to win. After the match, Kessie approaches Youngju and says that she's the best gift her family could ever get. She then hands her the bracelet, making her happy. The following morning, Yunju moves into a new apartment provided by the Black Dragon team. Later, when her father discovers her farewell letter, he is heartbroken. Meanwhile, Zuno starts firing several employees, including a man whose son is sick. The man begs him every possible way, but our hero doesn't care. Cassie feels bad about this and begs him not to terminate the employees. He gives her three minutes to come up with a convincing statement, but she fails and tells him that he's a cruel man with no feelings. Later, she complains to Yanshin about how heartless he is, but he tells her that Zuno wasn't always like this. In a flashback from years ago, we see him firing an employee who begs to keep his job. Despite his pleas, Zuno doesn't listen and leaves in his car with his mother. Mom tells him that what he did was wrong because his actions can impact the man's family. After some convincing, he eventually agrees to change his decision and help the man. Unfortunately, at that moment, the disgruntled employee speeds towards him in a car and causes an accident, leading to his mother's death. In the present, Yanshin mentions that during those three dark minutes, Zuno's mother was taken away from him. That's why he now uses three minutes to do most things. Hearing this, Kessie feels emotional and starts to cry, so he has to comfort her. Later, the two friends visit a clinic where Zuno describes a situation in which he feels someone else's pain. However, the doctor dismisses him and suggests it might be due to stress. Yanchen agrees and asks the doctor to give him some medication. This makes our hero mad, and he asserts he's not insane. Later, he heads to the Mad Tiger's gym where Kessie's father is training his teammates. He tells him to vacate the place soon because he plans to build a shopping mall there. The old man begs him not to do so, but Zuno doesn't care. This makes Kessie's father so anxious that his blood pressure rises and he has to be taken to the hospital. When Kessie finds out about this, she becomes very upset and is determined to change his mind. Later, she's practicing boxing with her friends and she sits so many times but doesn't feel any pain. Meanwhile, Zuno is at home and feels her pain and begins to panic. He immediately gets in his car and heads to the boxing ring to stop her from fighting. When he arrives, he defends Kessie from her friends and asks them not to hit her from now on. Afterward, he brings her to his house and asks her to spend the night. Kessie begins blushing because she assumes he likes her. However, she's disappointed when he asks her to sleep on the floor. He also ties her up so she can't escape and so he can sleep peacefully without pain. The next morning, they wake up hugging each other, creating an awkward moment. He tries to untie her, but she suddenly falls out of bed and knocks over a glass. The glass breaks, and as she's about to land on it, he protects her with his bare hands. Later, as she's tending to his wounds, she assumes that he's fallen in love with her. However, he doesn't know how to explain that he's doing all of this for himself and not her. That afternoon, while walking through the city, Kessie notices her friends promoting the Mad Tigers Club. Unfortunately, most people are either ignoring them or throwing away the flyers. Later, she heads out with friends and ends up getting shit-faced. Once again, this affects our hero and he starts to feel dizzy and gets a headache. He immediately summons her to his office and she rushes to see him. He then scolds her for drinking and asks for a hangover remedy. After taking the medicine, he informs her that she must now stay with him for 24 hours a day to ensure his safety. 
He tells her that her salary will be doubled and that she will have better facilities. Taken aback by this, she puts forth two demands. She wants him to save the Mad Tiger Club, and she must also have her same room in the house. Unaware that her father owns it, he's confused about why she wants to save the club. However, she claims that she's a former trainee there and doesn't want the club to be demolished. Being a prick, he refuses to comply, but when Kessie says she will quit, he has no choice but to agree. Following this, the two sign their new contract and confidentiality agreement. The next morning, Kessie arrives at Zuno's house with her belongings, and she's given a large room for herself. However, this doesn't mean that she has complete freedom. He tells her that she has to follow many rules, like she can't use the bathroom before him, and she can't mess up the house. Later on, while practicing boxing, our heroine starts singing loudly. Zuno urges her to stop because it's Sunday and he wants some peace. When she ignores him, he tries to put tape on her lips. During the tussle, he falls on top of her and they accidentally kiss. This makes Cassie mad, so she punches Zuno and knocks him out. When he wakes up, she's treating his wounds and says she only punched him because she felt he was going to take advantage of her. He tells her that the opposite is true because she tried to kiss him the other day. She then recalls the time she attempted CPR on him and apologizes. Later, she prepares delicious fried rice for them and invites them to eat together. But when Zuno sees the food, he remembers his late mother and heads to his room without eating. At that moment, Cassie becomes overwhelmed with emotion and begins to cry for no apparent reason. The next morning as they head to work, she tells Zuno that she's been feeling overly emotional and cries about everything. He jokingly responds that there must be evil spirits around her. Later, the employees wish him a happy birthday, but he avoids them and walks straight into his office. Cassie doesn't understand why he's like this, so Yanchen reveals that Zuno hates his birthday because his mother passed away on this day. Hearing this, our heroine feels bad because she knows he can't convey his emotions, so she approaches him and says that she will grieve for him. She then begins to cry like a baby, and it's at this moment that the two realize that his emotional pain has been transferred to her, which is why she cries most of the time for no reason. While talking about it, his stomach begins to hurt and she goes to get him some medicine. At that moment, a former employee shows up and tries to attack him. Kessie intervenes just in time, but she gets hit on the head. The two then rush to the hospital and thankfully, her injury is not serious. While leaving, Kessie says that she understands why all this is happening. She claims that they're destined to be in love and hugs him tightly. However, he refuses to believe this and forbids her from talking about it again. The next morning, Kessie tells Zuno that she has an idea for both of them to trade their pain and emotion. The two of them butt their heads, but it doesn't work. Elsewhere, during Yeonju's training, her father arrives with soup for her. As she's practicing in the ring, he overhears two people criticizing her technique. They say that she's only there as a marketing ploy, and once they're done with her, they'll just toss her out. Dad obviously doesn't take this well, so he gets into an argument with the guys. Seeing this, Youngju gets mad at her father and asks him to leave. He tries to convince her that these people don't have value and they're only using her, but she says it's the same thing he did to her. He then asks her to at least take her favorite soup, but she reveals that she never liked it and only ate it for his sake. That evening, Kessie has another idea. She connects a cable from an antenna and attaches it to Zuno's toes. She tells him that she read on the internet that if he gets struck by lightning, he will get his feelings back. However, soon it begins to thunder and she gets terrified and hugs him. The next morning when Cassie arrives at the office, all the female employees are happy with her. An employee reveals that since she came into her boss's life, he's been different. Turns out, Zuno has granted all the female employees three days off a month during their periods to rest. Hearing this, Kessie feels happy and realizes that he's not the cold-blooded man she thought he was. She then goes to thank him, but suddenly notices how attractive he is. As a result, she becomes nervous and spills water on him. He begins to scold her, but she accidentally falls on his legs. In this romantic moment, Yanshin walks in, creating a rather awkward moment. Later, Kessie receives a phone call from a friend informing her that Yunju has fainted in the boxing ring. Panicked, she rushes to check on her, but the arrogant sister isn't pleased. She accuses Kessie of being self-centered and always making herself the victim. Our heroine asks why she hates her so much, and the bitch responds that she never liked her in the first place. So she goes home and ends up crying all night. The next morning, she decides to go for a jog to clear her mind. Zuno notices that she's upset and asks her what happened, but she says it's a personal matter. She then leaves the house, but he follows her to keep her safe. 
While they're running, a motorcycle nearly runs over Cassie, but Zuno saves her just in time. Unfortunately, she twists her ankle in the process, and he has to carry her home. In the afternoon, Zuno, Yanchun, and Cassie visit their company to discuss renewing their contract. However, the writer is quite disrespectful to Zuno and claims that there's someone else who wants to work with him. Therefore, he gives both Zuno and the other person a contract to bring him an incredible proposal, and whoever arrives first will get to sign the contract. Later, as they get in the car, our hero is furious about the writer's behavior. Since he needs the contract so desperately, he asks Yanchen to find out everything there is to know about the writer so he can make the best proposal. Meanwhile, Kessie records their conversation and sends it to a man named Mr. Wu. He is none other than Zuno's competitor, and it turns out that Mr. Wu asked Kessie to spy on him in exchange for investing in her father's club. As Zuno sits on the decision whether or not to destroy the club, Mr. Yu has promised Kelsey that he would rebuild the club once and for all. After sending the voice message, our heroine realizes that she's wrong and feels guilty, but she has no other options. The next day at the office, she brings Zuno coffee during his meeting and overhears the details of his business proposal. She then texts this information to Mr. Wu and feels bad about her betrayal. Meanwhile, Zuna sends Jianchen to meet with his writer to discuss his business proposal. He then goes out for coffee with Cassie and tries to talk to her about something. However, before the conversation can begin, he receives a sudden call. It's from Jianchen, who reveals that their competition has secured the contract ahead of him. Later, the boys are discussing their loss and assume someone must have leaked their information. Yanchen then confronts Kessie and asks if she revealed the information to Mr. Wu in exchange for money. She vehemently denies it, and our hero says that he trusts her. However, Yanchen warns her that if he discovers her treachery, he will not hesitate to sue. Later, while leaving the office, Zuno accidentally bumps into Yunju and notices her bracelet. He recalls that the girl who saved him during the accident was wearing the same one. This makes him very happy because he believes he's finally found his guardian angel. However, he's completely unaware that the bracelet actually belongs to Cassie. Later, he continues to gaze at Yunju and notices that she's friends with one of his employees, Liang. He believes he's her boyfriend and is disappointed that he won't be able to get closer to her. Meanwhile, Liang, who's working on a boxing show, tries to get Yunju to participate. She accepts, but on the condition that Cassie is her opponent. Later, our heroine is given the same offer, and she reluctantly agrees. Upon returning home, she discovers Zuno watching Young Ju's videos. She asks him why he's so interested in boxing all of a sudden. He explains that Young Ju is the most important person in his life, so he wants to know everything about her. Seeing how happy he is, Kessie feels upset. The next day, they arrive at a restaurant to meet Liang and Young Ju to discuss their boxing show. However, Kessie privately warns them not to tell Zuno that they're siblings. Our hero is smitten with Young Ju, so he immediately approves of the boxing show. He also tells her that she can reach him any time if she needs anything. At this moment, Kessie senses his feelings and realizes he's excited and nervous. This upsets her because she started to develop feelings for her boss. Later, she musters up the courage and asks him if he likes Young Ju. Our hero responds that it doesn't matter because she likes someone else. That evening, Yanchen arrives to see Zuno and is shocked to hear that he's approved of the boxing show. He asks if he's doing it for Kessie, but Zuno denies it and says that he's doing it for Young Ju. Yanchen doesn't believe him and claims that he only feels owed to Young Ju because she saved his life, and that's not love. So he gives him a fitness watch and suggests that he get physically close to both girls and see whose presence makes his heart race. Later, Cassie and her friends celebrate the approval of the boxing show. However, she's worried because her father has still not granted her permission. Leon comes up with a solution. He advises her to wear a mask, as this will not only enable her to participate, but also add a mystery element to the show. Our heroine loves the idea, and she promptly agrees to it. Days later, the boxing training is about to begin, so Cassie prepares with a medical box in advance. Zuno notices her and asks what she's doing. When she doesn't answer, he gets close to her, and this is when his heart starts beating fast. She eventually reveals that she'll be having her period soon, so she's preparing. Our hero fears that he will be in a lot of pain, so he begins to take care of her and buys her lots of food and medications. She also pretends to be unwell, but he's surprised that he's not feeling any pain. Kessie then goes to the bathroom and punches herself, so he won't doubt her. In the next scene, she heads to the boxing ring to practice with her sister. During this, she receives many blows and ends up getting hurt. Zuno also has a very painful night, but he assumes that Kessie might be having her period cramps. The next morning, while heading to his office, he comes across Young Ju. Recalling his friend's advice, he hugs her, but notices that his heart rate is normal. Moments later, when Kessie shows up, his heart begins to beat very fast. Unfortunately, she gets upset seeing them together, so she angrily storms away. Kessie then tries to avoid him as much as possible. Later, she meets with Mr. Wu, who wants to know more about our hero. 
However, she continues to complain about how focused Zuno is on her sister. Mr. Wu is confused by her behavior and asks if she likes Zuno, but she denies it and leaves. Later, Zuno tries to reach Cassie several times, but she doesn't answer his calls. Eventually, he tells her that if she doesn't arrive in three minutes, he will die. This sends our hero into a state of panic, and she rushes to his place. But when she asks if he's okay, he just says he's hungry. Cassie then takes him out, and they get on a public bus. They sit next to each other and have a lot of fun. When they arrive at the restaurant, they coincidentally run into Young Ju and Liang, so the four of them start eating together. During this, our hero keeps gazing at Young Ju and even gives her a rose. Cassie is enraged by this, so she storms out. He quickly realizes his mistake and offers to buy her a bouquet of flowers, but she refuses them and returns home furious. In the next scene, the boxing show finally starts, and Cassie wears a mask to hide her identity. She then fights skillfully against her opponent and qualifies for the next round. Meanwhile, Zuno senses her pain and hurries to the event location with Yanchen. However, they don't recognize her because of the mask. Afterward, Zuno comes across Young Ju and tries to initiate a conversation with her. When she accidentally trips, he helps her by catching her. Just then, many media outlets appear out of nowhere and capture them in this intimate position. Kessie also notices them, which causes her to walk away angrily. Zuno follows her and tries to explain that he was only helping Young Ju. When she doesn't listen, he takes her to his car and opens the trunk, revealing a bunch of flowers he bought for her. Seeing this, her anger immediately goes away, and she feels happy. The next day, there's a press conference to celebrate the successful debut of the boxing show. Zuno and Young Ju arrive together, while Kessie has to block the media from them. All of a sudden, Mr. Wu shows up and begins asking about Zuno's relationship with Young Ju. He wants to know if the handsome CEO made the show just for her. The other reporters are intrigued by the question, so they also start demanding answers. Zuno then explains that he indeed made the show for Young Ju because it wouldn't have been successful without her. Hearing this, Kessie becomes jealous and she goes to the bar to drink alone. Soon after, Zuno feels her dizziness and asks Yanchen to check up on her. When the latter approaches her, he sees her in a very depressed state. She complains about the fact that Zuno always treats her badly. She doesn't understand why he gives her flowers and makes her feel special if he likes Young Ju. However, Yanchen claims that his boss likes her and that his heart beats rapidly when she's around. Afterward, he drops her home and she begins to recall every moment spent with Zuno, concluding that she's in love with him. When our hero arrives to check on her, he notices that she's dressed seductively and has terrible makeup on. She then begins to seduce him until she eventually corners him and kisses him. The next morning, both of them are very nervous about what happened last night. Cassie tells her friends about this, and Zuno also shares it with Yanchen. The handsome friend doesn't understand why our hero is such a coward, so he agrees to be his wingman. Later when Cassie arrives, she asks Zuno to stop pretending like he doesn't like her. She claims that they're both in love, and that she knows this because his heart beats rapidly when she's near. Hearing this, Zuno takes Yanchen aside and explains the transfer of emotions and pain between himself and her. He says that he doesn't love her, and that the only reason he keeps her so close is because he doesn't want to feel her pain. Unfortunately, our heroine overhears the entire conversation and is devastated. She thanks him for clarifying their relationship and runs out of the house in tears. Yanchen follows her and tries to explain that Zuno really loves her. He thinks that the transfer of pain and emotions is nonsense, but she knows it's true. When she returns home, she and Zuno continue to ignore each other, and this situation becomes very awkward. Later, she and her father go to visit Young Ju, and they cook some food with her and enjoy it like the old times. Seeing them take care of her so much, Young Ju feels very blessed. The next day at work, Zuno is furious and begins yelling at his employees for no apparent reason. When Kessie arrives, she tells him that she's had enough of everything and wants to quit. However, as expected, he denies her resignation and threatens to sue her if she quits. Later, she decides to take revenge on him by wearing a pair of tight high heels. As soon as she does, Zuno's feet start hurting. Since he's in a meeting, he has to abandon it without any explanation. When he spots her wearing heels, he carries her to his office and makes her wear sports shoes. Seeing this, everyone in the office is surprised, and they assume that they're in a relationship. That evening, Kessie goes out for a drink with her sister, and the girls spend their time opening up to each other. Yunju tells her that she likes Leong and isn't interested in Zuno. Kessie also admits her feelings for our hero, and the girls agree not to go after each other's crushes. The next morning, she continues to persuade Zuno to accept her resignation, but he refuses. Later, he asks Yanchen to set up a blind date for him, which makes Kessie jealous. That afternoon, Zuno leaves for his date, and she follows him. He meets a girl, but shows no interest in her, and claims she's not his type. He says he's only here because he needs something to eat. 
Moments later, he accidentally spills water on himself, and the girl offers to clean it up. At this moment, Zuno notices his bodyguard watching them from afar, so he doesn't stop the girl. This makes Kessie very mad, and she retaliates by putting on the high heels. When Zuno can't take it any longer, he abruptly ends the date and leaves. The next day, Kessie takes some time off work, claiming she needs to support her friends in the boxing competition. However, the truth is that she needs to participate herself as the mysterious masked girl. During the competition, she fights against girls who are far weaker than her and ends up winning without taking a single hit. She later meets up with her friends to celebrate the victory. During this time, Zuno calls her multiple times, but she ignores him and continues to chat with her friends. As a result, he decides to take revenge on her. He begins watching emotional movies, which causes her to cry suddenly. After that, he watches a comedy film, and she begins laughing like a psychopath. When the situation becomes very awkward, she finally calls him and asks what he wants. Our hero smiles and orders her to return home. Following this, Liang offers to drive Kessie home, and on the way, she complains about how controlling and annoying her boss is. This infuriates Liang, so when he reaches home, he confronts Zuno, saying he can't treat her that way. One thing leads to another, and the two get into a physical altercation. But before things can escalate, Kessie hits Leong to defend her boss. She then apologizes and says it's her job to protect him. After he leaves, Kessie treats Zuno's wounds, and he's thankful that she defended him. He claims that she's a good bodyguard, so he will raise her salary and allow her physical contact, such as hugging and kissing him. Hearing this, our heroine is thrilled, and she takes every opportunity to hug him whenever he's good to her. Days later, Yeonju starts receiving a lot of backlash on the internet for being rumored to be Zuno's girlfriend. People are saying that she only got the show because of him, and this badly affects her reputation. To protect her, our hero issues a public statement stating that he and Yeonju are not dating and that he's only interested in her. When Kessie sees the statement, she confronts him about it, but he acts coldly towards her and says he likes Yeonju. This makes her very upset, so she leaves and cries uncontrollably the whole way. Afterward, Zuno meets with Yeonchen, and they are both worried about her. Our hero clarifies that he is in love with her, and he's only doing this to repay Yeonjun's debt from years ago. Hearing this, Yeonjun is overjoyed that he finally admitted his feelings. Later, Kessie, who's heartbroken, devotes herself to training, where she gets hit many times. Zuno feels her pain, and as usual, becomes frustrated. He calls her pretending to be sick, and immediately summons her. Kessie, worried about his well-being, rushes to his home and starts taking care of him. After a while, she thinks he's better and tries to leave, but he insists he's still sick, and stops her. Zuno then decides to tell her the truth, but he's interrupted by a phone call from Youngju. She claims that she wants to talk to him about something urgently. Our hero goes to meet her, and she shockingly says that she wants to be his girlfriend. However, Zuno hands her the bracelet and explains why he's been helping her. He reveals that she saved his life years ago and has been grateful to her ever since. Hearing this, Youngju is taken aback because she recalls being by her sister's side when she saved him. But she doesn't tell him the truth and asks him to pay her back by accepting her as his girlfriend. To her surprise, he rejects her and tells her that a bracelet can't buy love because he has another girl in his heart. She asks him if that girl is Kessie, and he says yes without any hesitation. The following day, Kessie fights another boxing match where she gains the upper hand, but just when she's about to land the final blow, she notices her father's face in the audience. This causes her to freeze and ultimately lose the match. Now that the mysterious masked girl has been eliminated, Kessie is distraught. Later, Zuno finds her crying and takes her to a park to cheer her up. She gets on the swing and says that her mother used to tell her that whenever she gets upset, she would swing, and it would make her feel better. Zuno likes the idea, so he helps her swing around, making her happy. He then says he doesn't like seeing her upset, and that she looks prettier when she smiles. This makes her girl realize that he also has feelings for her, and she gets very nervous. Days later, it's her graduation, and Leong shows up to congratulate her with a bunch of flowers. He admits that he's always liked her, and even proposes marriage to her. Just then, Zuno arrives and interrupts their moment. He also confesses to Kessie that he likes her and wants to date her. Leong warns her not to trust a rich CEO, but she happily holds his hand, and the two run away from there. From that point onward, Zuno and Kessie officially begin dating. Both of them have never fallen in love before, and are both excited and afraid. On the first day of their relationship, Kessie decides to prepare a cake for them, and they have a great time laughing and joking in the kitchen. Later, she suggests they should keep their relationship a secret from others. However, she can't help defend Zuno in front of everyone, which makes him happy. All this while, Mr. Yu keeps texting her for information about the rich CEO, but she has started ignoring his messages. Later, she talks about her new relationship with her friends. She says she no longer wants to be Mr. Wu's spy, as it feels like cheating on her boyfriend. Her friend suggests that she needs to settle things with him, or her relationship with Zuno could be ruined. Just then, Kessie gets a call from her sister, saying she wants to meet urgently. 
In the next scene, she arrives at a lakeside where young Ju and Leong are waiting for her. They say no matter what happens between them, they must move on and focus on the show. Leong then informs Cassie that he wants to bring her back on the show. However, he says she must reveal her face, which might affect her relationship with Zuno. Hearing this, our heroine feels emotional and says that her relationship was doomed from the start. So, she will spend the rest of her days with him, being happy and making beautiful memories. The following day, the couple goes to see a doctor for his checkup. They notice Mr. Wu's employees spying on them outside the clinic. Zuno then informs Kessie that he uses Yanchen's name to visit the doctor. He says that Mr. Wu wants to spread rumors that he has a mental illness and is looking for proof. Hearing this, our girl gets worried and is also terrified that her involvement with Mr. Wu may be revealed. In a state of panic, she drinks an entire carton of milk. This unfortunately makes Zuno sick, and he's rushed to the hospital. That evening, Mr. Wu looks at pictures of the couple and notices that they've grown closer. Afterward, he meets Kessie in an underground parking lot and pesters her for information on the CEO. Leong also arrives on the scene, and he's surprised to see Kessie in a strange car. He approaches her and asks who the people are, but she ignores him and leaves in a hurry. The same day, she meets a new intern who has a crush on Zuno. The girl is very frank by nature and asks Kessie to deliver him a love letter. Our girl agrees and goes into Zuno's office, but finds no one around. So, she begins snooping through his files since Mr. Wu needs some proof against him. Moments later, Zuno enters the office and she closes the filing cabinet. She then gives him the intern's love letter, but he gets angry and tears it up. At that moment, Yanchen arrives and is mad at Kessie for being in a restricted area. However, Zuno stands up for her and says he trusts her. After leaving the office, Kessie receives another call from Mr. Wu, who asks for any updates. He mentions that he already knows Zuno is selling shares at a low price, but he wants to know the reason. She doesn't want to betray her boyfriend again, but she's obligated to put up with Mr. Wu's demands. Later, she shares this with her friend, and the latter suggests that she end a relationship with Zuno before he discovers she's a spy. However, Kessie says she can't do this and will come up with a way to stop the cunning rival. Meanwhile, Zuno is sitting on a bench near the fountain recalling all the happy memories spent with her. He loves her unconditionally, completely unaware that she's a traitor. That night, Kessie goes to his desk and secretly takes pictures of his confidential files. Zuno shows up at that moment, but he doesn't suspect her. He instead holds her in his arms and kisses her forehead. He then tells her that he will go to any length to make her wishes come true. Hearing this, Kessie is deeply touched and feels guilty about her behavior. The next day, Zuno requests a confidential meeting where all his business associates are present. Meanwhile, Kessie has no idea what the meeting is about and goes to Mr. Wu. She shows him the pictures she took last night, but he says that these documents are of no use at all. Instead, he asks her to make a list of the people who are attending today's confidential meeting. In the next scene, Kessie feels very guilty and she dreams about how Zuno will react if he discovers the truth. She soon wakes up from this nightmare and seeing her anxious, he comforts her. He then advises her to take the rest of the day off, as she doesn't seem fit for work. Kessie asks if he doesn't trust her, but he explains he's only doing this to protect her. Later, Zuno meets with Yanchen and asks him to create a termination contract for Kessie because he wants her to stay out of his complicated business world. Meanwhile, she meets with Leong and honestly discloses that she's a spy. She now wants to write an anonymous article about Mr. Wu and his evil plans. Leong is shocked upon hearing this, but he agrees to help her. That evening, Zuno hands Kessie a termination letter and informs her that she won't have to work anymore. This upsets her a lot and she can't understand why he's doing this. She asks if he's ending their relationship, but he denies it and asks her to go back to her family. At the same time, Leong posts an article criticizing Mr. Wu and how he's been spying and harassing Zuno, which causes a big stir on the internet. The following day, Zuno and Yanchen meet with Leong and ask him how he found out so much information about Mr. Wu, but he refuses to disclose his source. They then order him to delete the article because if Mr. Wu finds out, he could hurt him. However, Leong stands his ground and says that he won't back down from doing the right thing. Later, when Zuno returns home, Kessie tears up the termination contract and informs him that she will not leave. She asserts that she's his bodyguard and girlfriend, and she will stand by him no matter what. The next evening, she's partying with her friends when suddenly Zuno arrives and joins them. The two end up getting drunk and later sleeping together. The next morning, they wake up by each other's side. They have no recollection of what happened the night before, but they seem pretty excited about it. Later, Yanchen arrives at the house and is surprised to see them coming out of the same room. He then shows them a video from last night in which a drunk Zuno is acting childishly and clinging to Kessie. This makes our hero feel embarrassed, so he immediately asks Yanchen to delete the video. Later, Kessie's friends call him and brief him about her wishes and preferences. This makes Zuno realize that he knows nothing about her, so he decides to take Kessie out on a date and fulfill her wishes. Later, he tells Yanchen that given the current situation, he and Kessie don't have much time together, so he wants to make beautiful memories and be happy. In the next scene, the couple prepares for their date and Kessie's friends give her a makeover. 
When she arrives at the office, all eyes are drawn to her because she looks stunning. Zuno is also shocked to see her, and he simply can't take his eyes off her. He then later takes her to Snow World and kisses her, which was on her wish list. The two then go to an amusement park and enjoy an amazing day together. Meanwhile, Yanchen investigates Cassie and learns from her social media account that she is Yeonju's sister and that the Mad Tigers belong to her father. He also finds out that she frequently communicates with Mr. Wu, confirming that she is the one sending him information. Furthermore, he discovers Cassie's registration form for the boxing show, revealing that she's the mysterious masked girl. Later, while the couple is still on their date, Zuna gets a call from Yanchen and goes to meet him. The latter wastes no time and explains all the things Kessie has done. However, our hero surprisingly admit that he was already suspicious about it. He says that despite everything, she protected him and helped him restore his emotions. And he knows she loves him deeply. He also tells Yanchen not to tell Kessie about this so that she won't be distracted before her final boxing match. The following day, the couple visits the doctor and finally discovers that she was his volunteer in their last session. After they explain their situation, the doctor suspects that the current overload of the treatment machine resulted in an error during that time. The two then return to the treatment room and put on their helmets. The machine soon begins to malfunction again, and they immediately remove their helmets. However, after leaving the lab, they realize that their feelings and pain have returned to themselves. Kessie can feel pain again, while Zuno can experience emotions again. Meanwhile, Mr. Wu is in a meeting with many shareholders and hands them a folder evaluating the company's current situation. He claims that since Zuno's arrival, the company has been failing and suffering massive losses. These days, he has sold the majority of his shares, so Mr. Wu asks these shareholders to buy them and make him the new chairman. In the next scene, the final day of the boxing match arrives and the two sisters face off. They are equally matched and skilled, so they block each other out. As the match wears on, Kessie gains the upper hand and eventually emerges victorious. She's become the first person to defeat Young Ju. She then removes her mask and apologizes to her father, who sees everything and smiles. Meanwhile, Mr. Wu is in Zuno's office with the shareholder signed agreement. Having no other option, our hero accepts the agreement and requests a 10-day handover period, after which he will leave the company. Mr. Wu then threatens him, claiming that if he doesn't fulfill his orders, he will not hesitate to hurt Kessie. Shortly after, Kessie learns about the situation, so she rushes to his office. However, in the parking lot, she's suddenly attacked and tased by Mr. Wu's employees. When she goes contactless for an hour, our hero starts getting worried. He checks the CCT footage and notices her rushing into the parking lot some time ago. This makes Zuno worried, and he fears she might be in trouble. His intuition turns out to be true, as he finds her lying unconscious on the floor. After a while, Cassie awakens in the hospital, but Zuno treats her very rudely. He says he can't forgive her for betraying him and deceiving him. He breaks up with her on the spot before storming out of there. Later, Cassie feels guilty for her actions and begins crying. Zuno also watches her videos on repeat and sobs alone. Turns out he ended their relationship so that Mr. Wu would not hurt her. Over the next few days, she sits at home depressed and crying all day. When she sees the news about Zuno's resignation on television, she becomes even more miserable. Yunju tries to comfort her and cheer her up, but to no avail. So she calls Zuno and invites him to meet her. Our hero is in no mood for this, but he eventually agrees. Yunju then reveals the truth that it was not her, but Kessie who saved him in the accident. She apologizes for lying to him and claims that she was simply jealous of her sister because Leong used to prefer Kessie over her. Hearing this, Zuno feels very happy and says that he and Kessie were always meant to be together. The next day, he says goodbye to his office with a sad expression in his eyes. However, before leaving, he signs a document authorizing the demolition of the Mad Tigers. When Mr. Wu learns of this, he finally believes that the couple has ended their relationship. He's glad he can get the benefits of this demolition without having to do anything himself. Later, Leong visits Kessie and informs her that their club has received multiple sponsorships due to their successful boxing show. But it turns out that Zuno has signed their demolition contract. Hearing this, Kessie is shocked and doesn't understand why he hates her so much. Later, she goes to his place to discuss the matter, but realizes that he's changed the door key. She calls him on his phone, but he doesn't answer. After she leaves, he becomes worried about her and follows her in his car to ensure her safety. Although he wants to reach out to her, he doesn't have the courage to do it. Later, he packs up Kessie's stuff and asks Yanchen to deliver it to her. When she receives the box, she becomes even more depressed and begins to miss Zuno badly. Dad doesn't know how to console her, so he decides to take the entire family out for karaoke. Later that night, Kessie has a heartfelt talk with her sister, who is now moving to the United States for her career. Youngju apologizes for all that happened between them and says it was her responsibility to protect the Mad Tigers, but she failed. However, Kessie says it's fine and urges her to pursue her dreams. 
The two sisters then hug each other and reconcile again. The following day, Leong, Kessie, and her father meet many sponsors so that they can save the Mad Tigers. They realize that none of them are really interested in boxing and are only focused on profit. However, after numerous tries, they meet a woman named Jian, who is not only a fan of the masked heroine, but also wants to promote boxing. Kessie and her father are surprised to see how much she knows about the Mad Tigers. After Jian outlines the corporation plan, Kessie realizes that the sponsor is very reliable and finally nods with a smile. However, later we learn that Jian is a very good friend of Zuno, and he was the one who sent her. Afterward, he talks with an investor named Jack and announces his plan to liquidate his present company. Turns out, he's already transferred all the main enterprises to another company, Nebula Entertainment, which was previously owned by his father. So, when Mr. Wu takes over this company, he will be left with nothing but substantial losses. At that moment, Zuno notices a strange figure outside his window, which turns out to be Kessie. She climbs through the window and informs him that her father's club has received many sponsors. This means that she will soon have a successful career and will be able to support him. They can even live in a beautiful mansion and own fancy cars. However, our hero refuses to talk to her and kicks her out of the house instead. The next day, Kessie and the others are watching a live broadcast of Zuno's resignation, but he hasn't heard anything from Jack. They watch a group of Mr. Wu and his stockholders enter the conference room in high spirits. Moments later, Zuno walks into the office and as he takes out his pen to sign, Jack texts him that the funds have been sent to him. Our hero then reveals that he has transferred all of his key enterprises to Nebula Entertainment, of which he is the new president. It means that all of his old company's shareholders will suffer large losses. Mr. Wu is infuriated upon hearing this, and he vows to take revenge. In the aftermath, Zuno proudly walks out of the conference room and announces the news in front of the media. He notices Kessie among the group of journalists rooting for him. The reporters then ask about his relationship with her, but he responds that she always follows him everywhere and that he's not interested in her. Hearing this, Kessie once again is heartbroken and walks away. Later, she goes to practice boxing where she meets her sister. Seeing her so upset, Young Ju mentions that she and Leong are going out for lunch tomorrow and asks her to join them. However, the next day when Kessie and Leong arrive at the restaurant, Young Ju is nowhere to be seen. She's intentionally summoned there for a reason. Just then, they spot Zuno and a new woman and some paparazzi taking shots of them. Kessie becomes enraged at the sight and tries to confront him, but Leong stops her. At that moment, Zuno approaches them and introduces the woman as his new girlfriend. Meanwhile, Mr. Wu's house has been confiscated and creditors arrive at his door. He has no way of escaping and has to hide in a warehouse with his brother. He then pledges that he will not rest until he destroys Zuno. Later, Kessie watches a video about his interview with another woman and becomes very depressed. However, she notes that he's constantly caressing his neck, something he only does when he lies. This makes her realize that he's only putting on a show. In the next scene, Zuno arrives at his office and meets Kessie, who has prepared a delicious meal for him. However, he tells her that he hates her and orders her to leave. She gets angry at first because she can't understand why he keeps acting this way. But then she meets his assistant who tells her that Zuno and her life might be in danger since Mr. Wu is intent on hurting them. Hearing this, Kessie decides to stay on alert and keep her eye on him. So she follows him everywhere he goes. At one point, he gets tired of seeing her everywhere and asks her to leave him alone. But she refuses to do so, saying that she knows the truth. She asserts that she's only following him for his protection. Fed up with her antics, Zuno tells her he's going to marry his girlfriend and even announces it in the media. Later, when Yanchen asks him why he's doing this, he reveals that Mr. Wu is out to take revenge on him, so he doesn't want to risk Kessie's life. Soon after, our heroine sees the news about his announcement and bombards him with calls and text messages, but he doesn't respond to any of them. Later, as he's walking down the street, he spots Kessie on her motorbike greeting him. At that moment, Mr. Wu shows up in his car and speeds towards Zuno. His intention is to finish him off. Sensing the danger, Kessie reacts very quickly and pushes him aside. But in the process, she ends up getting run over. In the aftermath, Mr. Wu flees from the scene while our hero holds an injured Kessie in his arms. Thinking she's going to die, she says her goodbyes and tells him that she loves him a lot. He bursts into tears and soon an ambulance arrives and takes them to the hospital. Afterward, Zuno finds out that Kessie has survived, but she's in a coma. Meanwhile, Mr. Wu is arrested for his crimes and taken to prison. Over the next few days, Zuno takes care of Kessie 24 7, but she doesn't wake up. Extremely desperate, he goes to the wishing fountain and prays hard, hoping that Kessie will wake up soon. As she shows no sign of improvement, he places the special bracelet on her hand, which she gave him years ago. He then proceeds to water his small plant when she suddenly wakes up and calls his name. Hearing this, he becomes so nervous that he doesn't dare look back. Kessie then gets out of bed and hugs him, saying that she will always love him, whether it's a sunny or rainy day. This makes our hero emotional, and he cries uncontrollably, bringing the show to a happy end.